here are the facts. Although Edward Bernays is little known today, his work speaks for itself. In an earlier episode, we explored Bernays' campaign to popularize smoking among women, but this wasn't his only project. He's the reason Americans eat eggs and bacon for breakfast. Before Bernays, most Americans ate a light breakfast. In the 1950s, the Beech Nut Packing Company contracted Bernays to expand sales of bacon. Instead of attacking other bacon companies, Bernays courted experts. He wrote a carefully worded letter to 5,000 physicians asking them whether a hearty breakfast was better than a light one. The results made headlines. More than 4,500 doctors recommended a hearty breakfast and specifically mentioned bacon and eggs. Bernays' plan was a success. Business owners across the United States took notice, and they weren't the only ones. In fact, Bernays worked for the United States both before and during his corporate campaigns. However, they didn't pay him to sell bacon or cigarettes. They paid him to sell wars. Here's where it gets crazy. In 1917, President Woodrow Wilson formed the Committee on Public Information, or CPI, which raised support for U.S. engagement in World War I. Bernays worked for the organization, which was headed by George Creel. They briefed President Wilson, directing him in the use of propaganda. The CPI hired thousands of four-minute men, speakers who were trained to speak about the war for four minutes during community events. The men at CPI believed that the average attention span was about four minutes. Bernays' work was successful, and the United States eventually did enter World War I. His work didn't stop there. Over the years, Bernays consulted with other presidents, Eisenhower, Hoover, and more, while continuing to consult with businesses. Often his client base overlapped in strange ways. When the United Fruit Company was unhappy with the democratic government of Guatemala in the 1950s, they first pulled strings with the U.S. Embassy. Under the previous dictatorship, United Fruit had enormous control over the country. They had tax exemptions, a large degree of autonomy, and controlled the country's railroad and post office. Yet the new presidents refused to support United Fruit's control of the nation. They also allowed the Communist Party to operate openly. Unfortunately for those presidents and Guatemala, United Fruit had high-level connections. Alan Dulles, the director of Central Intelligence, was a stakeholder in United Fruit, and his brother, John Foster Dulles, was Secretary of State. But United Fruit still needed to convince Congress and the American public, so they hired Edward Bernays. Bernays persuaded Congress and the administration that attacks on United Fruit were proof of communist subversion and that President Arbenz was a communist himself. According to the CIA report, he sent correspondents from Time, Newsweek, The New York Times, and Chicago Tribune to report on communist activities in Guatemala. As the coup took place, Bernays persuaded the American public that the CIA-backed military juntas were actually freedom fighters stopping the spread of communism. Bernays' work paved the way from the 1954 coup of Guatemala, which triggered a civil war that would last for four decades. By the time this war ended, hundreds of thousands had died. Bernays' work attracted several notable fans, including Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels, who based his strategies on Bernays' theories. This isn't to say that Bernays was necessarily a bad man, just very, very good at what he did. And Goebbels wasn't the only person to copy Bernays' work. PR agencies across the planet use Bernays' techniques every day, influencing your opinion about products, countries, and of course, politics. But who's paying them to influence you and why? That is something they don't want you to know. Tune in next week to learn more about the legacy of Edward Bernays and how the same propaganda techniques are being used on you today.